In order to address these uh, challenges, we have to use a design procedure. In this design procedure, we are typically following a design flow. That means we are gradually adding more and more artifacts, more and more models that are describing our designs. And uh, using the next slides, I'd like to introduce you a little bit to the notion of uh, design flows. Uh, in this course, I'm going to use a design flow model, uh, which is a little generic in that uh, it can be used to derive uh, specific design flows as uh, special cases. So in this generic uh, uh, design flow, I'm using a loop, and we will see if we consider special instances of this loop, we will be able to generate uh, those more specific design flows. In these design loops, we are considering the input which is available to us. The input consists of the specification. Furthermore, we assume that uh, we are given some hardware components, so we are not uh, starting from scratch. There are certain hardware components that are available to us. And furthermore, we are given some software components. So there are some software components that are available to us, like, for example, real-time operating systems. These are then assumed to be stored in a so-called design repository. That's a kind of a database in which we store all these design artifacts. And then during the design flow, we are using iterations. And in each step of these iterations, we have a number of things to perform. We have to evaluate our designs or possibly partial designs with respect to multiple objectives, such as energy, cost, performance, and we will see later on that there are many more such objectives. And also, we have to validate our partial design. We have to make sure that uh, our decisions so far have been correct. We have to map our applications. We have to map our specification uh, onto uh, the hardware that we're using there in our system. And we have to do this in an optimizing way. Now, after many, many iterations, we might possibly, or we might hopefully, uh, arrive at the final design, and the final design is something that we could implement. Now, we also have to test our design. And with respect to testing, there are different approaches. One way would be to do the testing at the very end. This means that we are generating the design, and then the final design would be handed, handed over to the test engineer, and the test engineer would uh, then try to perform tests. However, it would be nice if it would be possible to integrate testing into uh, these design iterations as well, because that would allow us, for example, to use test patterns also for validation. And that means there would be a tighter in integration of testing into these design iterations. Now, it depends a little bit on the specific design flow that's used in a certain team, whether testing could actually be integrated or not. So that's a little bit dependent on uh, what we are considering there. So uh, I mentioned that this is the uh, generic uh, design flow from which we can derive as special cases more uh, specific design flows. I'm not really going into the details of specific design flows because that depends very much on the design team, on the tools that are available, on the application areas, etc. So therefore, I will uh, constrain myself to just demonstrating that specialized uh, design flows can be derived as special cases. So as a first case, I'm referring to the spec C design flow, which has been designed at the University of California at Irvine, where a special language is used for the design. And there, it has been proposed to start with a specification model. The specification model is then simulated. And as a result of that simulation, we are obtaining an evaluation and a validation of the design steps that we have taken so far. And we are able to explore uh, the architecture. That means we are able to explore the underlying hardware components. As a result, we are obtaining a hardware model. This hardware model can then be simulated. And as a result of that simulation, we are obtaining, again, an evaluation and a validation. And uh, after that, we can start the next uh, set of design steps, which involve 
the communication synthesis, this means that we decide how uh, to uh, communicate between the components. As a result of that, we obtain a communication model which can be simulated again and uh, uh, as a result we get an evaluation, a validation of uh, that partial design and we can then perform the next steps which involve uh, the detailed uh, generation of hardware and the detailed generation of software. As a result, we get a complete uh, uh, implementation model which we can then use for manufacturing. So these uh, different iterations, they are special cases of the loop that uh, uh, has been shown for my generic model. As a second case, uh, I'm referring to the so-called V model, which is uh, shown in a graphically rotated form over here. The V model is required to be used for uh, many designs, including uh, many designs uh, for uh, public agencies in Germany, for example. Uh, according to the V model, we start again with uh, a requirement analysis. As a result, we get something which is called a system architecture. And then there is some uh, next uh, design phase. As a result of that, you get some other architecture. The details of these architectures and the precise meaning is not that important. For the time being, it's sufficient just to realize that this is, again, a special case of the generic design flow that I showed on uh, the uh, on slide nine, two slides ago. So we see that this is a special case of what I showed earlier. And the last special case is this one. It's another design flow which has been proposed by Daniel Geiske. According to Daniel Geiske, we are visualizing the design flow uh, in three different dimensions. Uh, the first of these dimensions is called the behavioral dimension. In this dimension, we are referring uh, to states, to procedures, to uh, other artifacts that are artifacts in the behavior domain of our system. And then as a second dimension, we have the structural dimension where we are referring to uh, uh, components like, like processes, like, like boards, like racks, etc. So there we are referring to concrete hardware. And then in the third dimension, we have the geometrical dimension uh, where we uh, model uh, geometrical relations between the different objects. Now the overall design flow consists of starting at a very high level behavior description and then proceeding wire a structural description down to a very detailed geometrical description. And we, again, we see that this can be seen as a specific instance of the generic design flow. That means it's sufficient just to model and to use this uh, generic design flow. So this leads me to uh, the summary for this uh, first set of uh, slides for today. Uh, I reminded you of the challenges that I discussed in the very first lecture. And uh, I uh, then continued on by demonstrating the uh, number of, uh, um, well, I started by telling you something about the characteristics and then I continued on uh, by telling you something about the resulting challenges. Uh, and finally, I demonstrated uh, the generic design flow and I will be using this generic design flow in order to structure the whole course. We will see that the different chapters in this course, they will correspond to the boxes there in the design flow. So this uh, concludes the very first part of the presentation. At this uh, 